Hi, a lovely lad came into my Twitch chat one day and asked about a Witcher 1 story recap. So here we are. I'm going to tell you about the Witcher 1 the way I would in stream, because I can. And mind you, this will only really talk about the important stuff, so the main story, not the side quests, even though they're very interesting. They don't really carry over much to the next game, so let's go. The game opens up with Geralt running away from the wild hunt. And after losing them, Lord knows how, he's found by Lambert and Eskel, his very best Witcher buddies. They take him to Kaer Morhen, where he quickly recovers, but oh no, he lost his memory. He doesn't get time to think about that, though, because the keep is attacked by agents from Salamandra, a criminal organization here to steal the secret to making Witchers. Geralt and the dudes defeat the attackers, but not before two of them steal some of the Witcher's secrets. Azar Javet and the Professor, the two leaders of Salamandra, get away with a small box containing the basics, but not quite everything. As they escape, the Professor shoots Leo, another Witcher in training that we only just met and nobody really cares about. Leo dies, and everyone is sad, except for us, because we don't care. Geralt helps Triss recover from her wounds, she gives him a trading card in return, and then the Witchers leave, to try and recover the Witcher's secrets, and also see what happens to some random Witcher called Beringar. Because we can. Literally, that's our reason. We're just gonna go look for him, because we can. Each Witcher chooses a direction of the wind, and Geralt went south to Vizima. There, he runs into a small village on the way, and as he arrives, he runs into Shani. An old friend of his and a small boy named Alvin arrives as well, along with his mother figure who immediately dies. Alvin, as it turns out, is a source. A child gifted with magical abilities. He does teleporting and prophesizing and crap. So yeah, pretty much the Elder Blood. The village Geralt is in is having some trouble with a ghost dog who kills people and Geralt doesn't care, really. He just wants to get into Vizima, but Vizima doesn't want him in there because his kind spreads disease, defeatism, and desertion. Probably. So to get into the city, he'll need a pass from a trusted source. In this case, a priest of the Eternal Fire. The priest tells Geralt that if he wants a pass, he'll have to deal with the beast. And so Geralt tries literally all sorts of pointless crap to deal with the beast. He meets Zoltan, his dwarven friend, Kalkstein, an alchemist, and he collects a lot of cards. But in the end, it turns out that everyone in the village is, well, a horrible person in some way. You know, the usual. Trafficking children, selling drugs, rape, and also the beast just sort of shows up during the final showdown with the villagers, so why was anyone trying so hard to find it anyway? The village is saved and depending on your choice, you either kill the stupid priest and steal the papers, or you side with the stupid priest and he gives you the papers. Either way, Geralt saunters off towards Vizima, only to get thrown in jail because people are awful. Ah, that's pretty much the reason, yeah. The professor is also in jail, but he's let go because the system is totally corrupt, don't you know? And while in jail, Geralt's given the chance to free himself by killing a monster in the sewers. Geralt, of course, takes the job, goes down into the sewers, and finds a knight of the Flaming Rose called Siegfried. Siegfried also hunts monsters, so they decide to go at it together, and Geralt is not only freed, but he also made a new friend. You know, for a while, at least. Now Geralt starts his investigation in Vizima, and for some reason, this includes a lot of card collecting. In the meantime, Geralt finds a detective called Raymond, and they start working together to find out where Salamandra is hiding out. Salamandra killed Raymond's family, so he has plenty of reason to hate them, too. In their efforts to find Salamandra, Geralt, of course, goes around collecting more cards, meeting Dandelion, having a party at Shani's, getting totally hungover and doing menial tasks for menial people to try and figure out if anyone has anything to do with Salamandra until they eventually decide that the swamp has a beautiful magical tower that Azar Javet, the perceived Salamandra leader, might like to enter. So Raymond and Geralt try to open the tower so they can set a trap for Azar Javet. Uh, but Azar Javet, smarty pants that he is, finds out about the trap, kills Raymond and pretends to be him for the rest of the chapter while he's doing drugs and talking Geralt into paying for it, like a champ. Now, there's a lot of running around in the swamp talking about water lords and their being nigh and old men eating people. And also the Scoia'tael and the Flaming Rose are having at it in the middle of said swamp and you have to pick a side. Or not. You know, whatever. Collect a card from a dryad while you're at it. 
Geralt then finds out about Azar finding out about the trap, so he sets a trap inside a trap, and basically that means he just goes to the tower and says, Hey man, I knew it was you all along. And then they fight anyway, so nothing really changed. Azar cheats though, and calls in the professor as well, and they can't really be bothered to finish the fight, so they just poison Geralt and leave. Unfortunately for them, Triss finds him and brings him back to Vizima, where she cures him and checks his, um, internal wounds, you know. Of course, Geralt doesn't get a moment of rest because Triss sends him off to do menial things. Which, again, is all in an effort to learn more about Salamandra, of course. And along the way, you know, the usual, he's collecting cards from vampires. Getting stupid drunk again, feeding women raw meat, figuring out that Radovid of Redania is kind of working with Salamandra, helping out werewolves and whores and trying to decide who to give Alvin to. You know, that small child from the first village. Yeah, Geralt's his dad now, and he has to decide whether Triss or Shani will be mothering him, because Salamandra is also after him for... uh... Re reasons? It's not really stated why. I don't think they know he has elder blood. It's just a kid. I mean, they kidnap kids. I guess they just do that. They just kidnap kids. Anyway, whoever doesn't get to be a mom gets really mad with Geralt, and the chosen mom gets Geralt another card for his collection. Eventually, the Scoia'tael are robbing the bank, and the Flaming Rose, well, isn't happy about it. This is where you pick a side, and the other side will kind of hate your guts, but not enough to later make up if you change your mind. So, Geralt decides to let the elves rob the bank, or kill the elves robbing the bank, or maybe he's just sad because he can't be neutral. Either way, the bank gets robbed, or not, and Geralt hops away to talk to Triss and their fellow conspirators. They figured out a way to teleport into one of the Salamandra hideouts, and depending on who you teamed up with at the bank, the Squiatel or the Order help Geralt to get in there, only to see Azar Javid casually escaping. Yep, that was worth it. Fortunately, the professor sticks around and he gets killed horribly while the cave collapses. What a winner. Geralt only just makes it out of the caves as well and is met with Ada, Princess of Temeria, who wants to kill him because she also works with Salamandra. Ah, yep. Triss is watching, however, and teleports Geralt out to a lovely little lakeside village where Geralt can hide out for a while until everyone forgets about him. And in said lovely lakeside village, Geralt goes about doing menial things, and while he's trying to broker a peace between the Vojinoi and the humans, untangling the murder mystery in the village and collecting, well, even more cards, he also finds the random witcher, Berengar. Berengar was also working with Salamandra because everyone is. Berengar tells Geralt that he hates being a witcher because everyone does. And he really can't tell you much about Salamandra at all, except for that he worked with them. And that makes Geralt shrug. So Berengar says, witchers. And continues to do absolutely nothing of importance. Just nothing at all. Alvin is also in the village, and he's following Geralt around like the creepy little disease that he is. But eventually Geralt solves the murder case, frees all the ghosts, kills Dagon, yes, the Lovecraft one, either kills Berengar because he's a twat or lets him walk off to sulk, and then Flaming Rose comes over to punch the elves that are hanging out near the village. Conveniently. Geralt has to choose a final time between the Order, the elves, or nobody at all, and whatever you do, Geralt leaves to Vizima with Dandelion. Vizima is unfortunately on fire, and the leader of the Flaming Rose, Jacques de Aldersburg, is, is trying really, really, really hard to take the crown from Foltest in the chaos. But Foltest is a badass, so that doesn't happen. As it turns out, Ada, Foltest's daughter, is cursed into a striga again, and Geralt has to fix it. Again. Geralt also has to fix saving the refugees, and yes, of course, he's also collecting the cards. In the meantime, he figures out that Salamandra is hanging out in the nearby castle cellar like a bunch of basement dwellers playing with their witcher mutations, so Geralt packs up his bags to visit Salamandra, and on the way there he runs into a Flaming Rose member who was shady from the start, and as it turns out, Salamandra guy was the one who cursed Ada back into a striga. So obviously he dies. Geralt moves his butt to the castle, finds a whole lot of ex-people, now turned failed mutant, and kills them. Turns out, Salamandra has been experimenting on kidnapped children and, you know, corpses too, I guess, to try and make their very own witchers. They failed, but 
they're not too sad about it because they still have these murder machines. And depending on who Geralt sided with before, the elves, the flaming rose, or Triss, if you're neutral, comes to save the day. They distract the monsters and Geralt sneaks into the castle to punch other monsters until he finds Azar Javed hiding in his lab. Geralt and him get into a snark off and if you didn't kill Berengar, he shows up to help. If you did kill Berengar, you have a magical amulet that may or may not have helped kill Azar, but it's not really stated. Anyway, Azar dies and then plot twist, it turns out the leader of the Flaming Rose is the actual leader of Salamandra, you know, Jacques d'Aldersburg. Pretentious names all abound. So Geralt skedaddles back to Vizima to tell everyone the big news, but oh no, the city is on fire even more now because nobody followed fire safety regulations and Jacques de Aldersburg is acting like a supervillain. Geralt and his buddy run straight into full test of Temeria and Radovid of Redania, arguing over how to fix the fire in this whorehouse, and Geralt agrees to take care of the Grand Master in exchange for a ridiculous amount of money. Geralt and whatever buddy he's with sneak their way through Vizima anyway, sewers included, where they fight a huge tentacly zoogle, until they finally reach the Grand Master's crib and Geralt goes in alone to face Jacques, who is hugging some babies to make himself seem likable. Spoilers, he's not! The Grand Master takes Geralt on a tour around the castle and then BOOM! teleports him into a vision of the future where everything is covered in ice. This is actually Vizima in the far, 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 far future. All the humans are now beasts and honestly nothing else really lives. Jacques' brilliant plan was to shepherd all the humans to safety by traveling south because apparently total annihilation doesn't happen in Ilfgaard. Oh, and he also just wants to kill all the non-humans because humans are great and stuff. Probably. Geralt doesn't agree with his crap, so he makes his way through the future ice fields all the way to the end where he punches the Grand Master so hard, the Wild Hunt shows up. Pretend Eredin tells Geralt he wants to take Jacques away, and Geralt can say yes, but let's be honest, he probably shouldn't. So he punches Pretend Eredin as well, and then kills Jacques, teleports out of the future vision again, and lives happily ever after. Now, of course he doesn't. Also, Jacques de Eldersburg. Yeah, that was pretty definitely actually Alvin! Oh my god! What a twist. Remember that Alvin was a source and shit? Yeah, so he was also of the Elder Blood, like I said, probably, and time traveling and all that. Listen, Alvin is weird. Let's just forget he existed, okay? Even Avalach doesn't include him in his existence, and you know that guy loves Elder Blood stuff. In the ending scene, Geralt picks up his several thousands of money and walks off until he realizes Foltest is about to be assassinated, so he runs back, sucks at fighting for a bit, until he throws all of his several thousands of money in the assassin's face and cuts off his arm. Turns out, the assassin's a witcher. Whoops. Geralt leaves and depending on the choices you made, uh, nothing changes whatsoever, because eventually it all goes back to normal anyway. Good stuff. Also, there's a little bonus adventure where you figure out that Eskel had a child surprise as well, called Deirdre, who slashes him in the face at one point and also was born under the curse of the Black Sun, and apparently it's all canon, so you better remember it, okay? Okay, that's all. Bye. Vafel. <laughs>